Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be working with the ribbon bound journal dies. So we're going to be making a junk journal pretty much. And even though this is a Friday share, um, it's kind of just like a going over something that someone asked me to do. So they asked me if I could do the ribbon bound journal. This was something I did not want to do because it looked like a lot of work. I did not do it during Create and I never actually took on this project. So I guess after being asked, I said it's time. So here it is. Also because it took me so long to just do the construction of the ribbon bound journal i will be splitting this up into two different videos so don't forget to like comment and subscribe share this with a crafty friend and hope you enjoy this video let's get started so these are the dies that come with the set there are a ton of dies in here and so um you have everything that you need to construct this and that's the spine die right there and also there's only like three dies that you actually need to make the construction everything else is decorative so you're gonna need your large plate system and your big empress your main empress not the mini so we're gonna start with the five by seven insert papers but if you don't have these you can make them cut it to ten by seven and score it in the middle at five inches and you're going to need to make a lot of them because what you need is four pieces for each section we're doing three sections so you'll need 12 pieces of paper to do your um, your booklets so you nestle them inside of each other four pages and then you're gonna have one book. Then you're gonna set those pages down onto your mat, your cutting plates. And when you do that, you're gonna to wanna to grab this die, which is called the spine die. And you're gonna put it in the middle where your score mark is. So just line it up right there. Put down some tape um, would be a good idea. I did not put that down this first time, but I think I did after that. Put down some tape so it doesn't move and run it through your machine. So after you've cut your spine, you wanna you wanna use this really um, dainty little die here which is called the decorative edge die and you're just going to want to add that on to one edge at a time so you start with the top edge and like I said you're going to want to tape that down and then run that through your machine and then once that comes out of the machine you're going to take it off and then you're going to move it to the other edge of your papers and you're going to want to run it through again now i don't recommend trying to do all your edges together like um by folding your paper and doing all your edges because i tried that and i did that and they came out kind of jagged and not very clean so don't do it that way <laughs> do it the way i'm showing you on here but because you can see the jagged edges on that and so here's the holes. They can be off center. If they're off center, don't worry about it. It's fine. All of mine were off center. They were on one side of the score line or the other side of the score line. They weren't on the score line and it's, it's gonna be okay. Get it as close as possible. So you're gonna have three of these booklets with these fancy edges on them out of text weight paper and now we're going to move on to the booklet covers and so you're going to need three of the pattern paper and if you want it to be double-sided that would be good and you're going to want to cut it to 10 by 7 
on mine. I didn't cut it to 10 by 7. I cut it to 10 and then didn't cut it to 7. Um, but whatever. I fixed it later. It's fine. And these are going to be the decorative covers to those pages that we just created. After you cut them down to what you need them to be, grab your scoreboard. I, I ended up using the guillotine to cut mine because they're, the, these papers that she provided us at Create are super thick, thicker than anything I've ever experienced. And it's actually amazing paper. Uh, I wish she would make this more often. But um, yeah, it was not going to cut on my, just on this We Are Memory Keepers scoreboard. So I brought this back to score on because I wasn't going to be able to cut it. But we're going to score everything at the five inches mark. And then we're going to have our binders, our booklets, and we'll have our pages. And so, you know, we're, we're off on the races. We're getting going. You can put your scoreboard away now and we're gonna bring out our uh, cutting mats again, the long empress plates. And of course you can use any die cutting machine as long as it has, um, well, at this moment you don't need long plates. So uh, any die cutting machine. And then bringing back out my empress. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing that we did on the journal pages here on the covers. So put down your spine die. I'm just adjusting the camera so that you guys can see the full page here on the plate system. Um, but you're gonna use the same two dies that we used before. You're gonna use your spine die and your decorative edge die and you're gonna do it just the way that we did on those journal pages.
Okay, we have all of those pieces cut out and now our pretty little booklets are going to need a cover and our journal is going to need a pretty cover. So it's going to be done with this blue double-sided paper that um, we're going to cut with the main spine die. So it's the largest die on our die set here. I just need to peel it off. And in Create, she gave us large pieces of paper to cut this with. But I know a lot of people were wondering, well, how do you cut it if you just have a 12 by 12 sheet of paper? And so I am going to do that right now. I'm not using the paper that came from Create. I am using just a regular 12 by 12 sheet of paper. I am going to take my craft knife and cut my paper down to the size of the die so that I can run it through my Empress machine and we'll get it on the plate system so that we can see how to cut this and what it will look like when we do it without a extended sheet of paper. And so we're just going to bring back our plate system and our Empress machine so that we can run this through and the thing we want to make sure is that if the die is going to be lined up exactly um, on the edges so almost as if we had a longer piece of paper but um, even if we don't I'm just adjusting my plates here that we know that it will cut the decorative edge and that's really what we're looking for so honestly um, as long as we line it up properly, it should be fine. And so um, I thought maybe I would leave, have make sure that it cut one edge and then go back and cut the other, but that's not gonna be a good idea. So just um, line it up right at the edge where the paper is just barely um, off of that line. And this is the way that we're gonna run it through. So um, you can see it at the top and at the bottom. The paper almost almost like it's like so close so close almost touches the die oh my gosh um, but yeah we're gonna run it through this way so put your top plate on and run that through the Empress machine and let's see what we get And here is the moment of truth. We're gonna take off our top plate and see what we got. And so it definitely cut the edges and it looks like it's okay. It's perfect. You don't even need um, to have a long sheet of paper from what I can see here. You get the decorative edge still. It looks perfect and the holes cut out um, exactly where they need to and that decorative edge matches the decorative edge on our binder covers so yeah um, it's probably odd it well it is odd it was odd to me just um, n not having it reach the top of the paper but it's okay so, and then just punch out your holes if they didn't just fall out automatically and here is our cover for our journal now that most of the tedious part of our process is done, I'm gonna start speeding everything up because I think that the main um, stuff was to make sure that we cut everything out properly so that everything aligns and looks really, really good. So we're just gonna you know, make sure our score lines look nice and crisp. So I'm just gonna warm them up using my ruler and my bone folder here. And then I'm going to do that on both sides so that we have a nice spine for our uh, journal. And right now we're gonna um, grab that really decorative um, piece that's gonna create that um, beautiful spine. And we're gonna cut that out of a gold metallic cardstock. And then we're gonna cut it out of a pink metallic cardstock. And then we're gonna cut it out of a ivory um, cardstock. So it's gonna get cut out three times. And once you have that cut out, we're going to move on to the next step. 
So I know this is an old project from Create, but how many of you guys made this? Or uh, if you haven't ever made this, are you gonna try and make this now that we've got it all made? Well, so we have all of our pieces cut out now um, and they're so pretty, but we need to uh, dissect two of them. So we're gonna dissect the gold one. We're just gonna cut out the part with the holes in it. And then we're also going to dissect the pink one, but we're gonna leave the white one intact. So do not dissect that one. And you could just use a plain pair of scissors or you can use a craft knife to do this. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to take the white decorative piece now and you're just gonna warm up your score lines and get it folded in the right direction the way that you want it to go. And this is so, so pretty. As you can probably clearly see, um, we're gonna be doing some offsetting, which you know I absolutely love to do. And so we're just gonna get this piece all warmed up and ready to go because uh, this is gonna be the one that's going to be our top piece. So I would like to mention that on um, these this die particularly, there is um, embossing. And so um, you don't have to get the embossing correct or deep on the pink and the gold, but you do wanna get the embossing to look really nice on the white um sheets because that's the one that's gonna show mostly and so i'm taking my barely art craft glue here because i'm a glue person and i'm just going to use that to uh adhere everything you can use um i'm getting glue everywhere <laughs> so <laughs> i'm going to be more careful on the next ones but this one has just being a little messy glue going everywhere um, but I was going to say, you can use a, a hot glue gun or double-sided tape, like, on this. Whatever you think is going to hold yours together the best. I personally think glue is outstanding at holding things together because I oftentimes want to dissect things after I put them down. I'm like, oh, no, that's not lined up or whatever, and I want to take it apart. And I've noticed that a lot of things I can get off, like double-sided tape I can get off and certain other things I can get off, but I can hardly, some, I can never get the glue off. And someone told me uh, I should try heating it with a heat gun. And I did that once and it was perfect. So whoever said that, thank you so much. Uh, just like, heat it up, reheat it up. It's not, well, it wasn't perfect, but it did get it off for me when I, so I mess up a lot because I think sometimes I just go too fast. My husband tells me all the time, you go too fast. You need to slow down. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. Isn't this looking so great, you guys? Look at that. It's got this really pretty just uh, glow to it I see here. That's really, really nice. I like the pink and the gold and the white all together. Now we just want to attach this really pretty piece to the journal cover that we made and I'm going to do that with glue so just take your glue or your tape and go in between the holes so that you can adhere it um, to all the way through and then go around the decorative edges of this piece like we did before with your glue or also with a tape or a glue gun so that you can adhere this to the 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 journal cover place it down and then line up the holes make sure that the holes are aligned so that we can do our binding which oh my gosh you guys uh the binding was killing me and i'm sure that that's why some of you guys want me to do this video whoever wanted me to do it um, so put your papers inside of their covers and let's go ahead and grab our thread and get it in the needle oh you need a needle get your needle and your thread or whatever you're gonna be using and thread it through the needle and then let's get started through the first hole. So we're going in the middle um, to begin with. And then you can tie this off into a knot, which is what they did in class. 
or you can tape it down. I taped mine down just because I'm like, if I mess this up, <laughs> I want to be able to get it apart. And we're going to use the first row of holes in our journal cover. So, and, but we're going to go through the middle. So just like we went through the middle of the book, we're going to go through the middle of the cover. And there's going to be a lot of flipping back and forth here. And I'm going to start this off, you know, in regular speed, but I am now going to take this whole thing down into slow motion so that you guys can follow along. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it in slow motion and you guys can follow along because book one and book two go in the exact same way. So I'm just going to do this in slow motion, follow along, make sure you're pulling tight the cording or whatever you're using your ribbon um because you want it to be a uh, you want it to be bound in there really well and you don't want it to be able to move around so i'm just like making sure that i'm always i'm pulling tautly on that cord and then moving on to the next step but making sure that it is tight and everywhere i am placing it down oh by the way this cord is 20 inches so you can cut 20 inches all of mine weren't exactly 20 inches i think some were like 18 inches some were 19 inches but the longest one this one in particular is 20 inches and you'll see i had plenty plenty of leftover um ribbon cording to tie off my knot at the end and everything like that and so make sure that you're um really paying attention here i will do the third one uh with everyone because that's the one that was really challenging uh, i mean it, maybe it wasn't really challenging but you know when you first don't know how to do something it can give you pause and that's what it did it gave me pause but for now we're just doing this one and in slow motion and it's going pretty smoothly you can see you're just really weaving in and out and in and out and in and out and up and down and up and down and up and down <laughs> and having a needle really helps with that so this is really fun and it's uh, going a lot better than I thought it was gonna go and it looks so oh so pretty you guys so if you haven't made a ribbon bound journal before or a junk journal which I never have I made the other um, um, binder book whatever we called it at create the last time which was amazing lovely I ended up making two or three more um, but I had never made this kind and I really like this one I I like the other one I, I guess I like them both uh, but I'm thinking so far I might prefer this one and I may be making more um, now that I got the hang of it I'm just tying a knot I'm tying it three times because I'm wanting to make sure that it really stays. And traditionally, you would cut that piece off. I was too scared to cut it, <laughs> just in case something went wrong. So I did not cut it off. Uh, I was like, I'm leaving this for now. So you will see this piece hanging off um, the whole video, because, you know, I had commitment issues in, in my cut there. But you can see that one. And then I'll also show you guys where I didn't end up cutting my paper down seven inches. I'm just now noticing that. And so I'm like, hey, why is this hanging off here? So if you, in the beginning, when I was talking about making sure you cut off your, or cut your paper to seven by 10, then you won't have this issue, but I did, because I did not cut my paper. So I'm gonna um, make sure that I fix that and in all of my pieces before we move on to the next step. But this is what you should have now and what it should look like. Okay, so we're gonna put in our pink one. I'm just gonna uh, speed up the video again because it looks the exact same way as, uh, the exact same as the, f the blue one that we just did. Um, if you need to go back and uh, watch slow motion and to, ca to catch that, uh, I highly recommend that for if you need it for the pink one. Um, but I'm just going to do this really quickly for you guys so that we can move on to 
the looping section and get done with the video so that we can decorate this thing in part two. So tie off your ribbon or your um, cording or whatever you decided to use for this um, journal and then we can grab our second piece. Sorry, not our second piece, our third booklet and um, continue on from here. Okay, so we're almost at the finish line. We have two of our book booklets in and we need to get the third one in. Now it does begin just like the other two. So just go into the middle um, space and then bring it through all the way and then put it into the journal cover into the middle. Um, but also if you want, you can tie a knot or put a piece of tape like I am doing here on just to hold your tail end so that you have enough just to tie off the end of your, um, just to tie it off at the end. So um, that's what that's for if you were wondering. And then just um, same thing. And I'm doing this in normal speed, but as soon as we get to the part where we're going to really be doing our loop-de-loops, I'm going to slow it down to slow motion so that you can really see what's happening here. And I messed this up so many times, so I'm, I'm glad that you guys have this for the slow motion. So you put your needle under the two um, loops that you see here that are already on there. And then you're going to make sure you pull tightly and then take your needle and go down through the top loop. So not under, but just where that top loop was that you just put in, pull it through and down through there. And then pull it tightly once again. And hopefully this is all making sense. If not, hopefully you can see what's happening in the video and you should have this it looks like it's an x shape in the middle and now just put your finger on it so it doesn't really move and pull it through this um, next hole um, that's next to this one i don't know what to call it but the second hole from the top and pull it through to the back And then you just flip it over to check to make sure everything is um, looking the way that you want it to look. And once you have it the way that you want it, you can flip it back over. And then we're going to put our needle through the very top hole. And then pull it through. And now that it's through, we're gonna repeat that same process. Make sure you're really pulling it tightly. So it's gonna go under the two loops that are there. Just pull it through with your needle. Hopefully you had a needle. If not, it might be a little challenging. And then you're gonna take it through the loop. And I don't know why I'm holding it like that. I shouldn't be, because it's gonna make it kind of hard for you guys to see. But just go down through that loop. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in the center where I did it, but just wherever you can find that loop, if you're not holding it like I am. And then pull it tightly. And now you have your second binding portion of your ribbon and you and you can see right there that this in order to make that x shape is going to need to go back down through the second hole from the top so back through 
flip flip it over pull it and now we're going into the fourth hole where, where are we going I can't see the, the fourth hole from the well from the top yes the fourth hole from the top so in through the through that hole flip it over pull it through and we're just gonna keep doing the same motion so we're gonna take our needle I'm just adjusting making sure it's the way I like it and that everything is tight because I don't want anything to come apart and I I flipped over uh, my journal so that you guys could see that now I'm working um, even though I went into that hole I'm at the top which would be the bottom if it was the other way but uh, I flipped it over so it looks like the top so I'm I'm going through the top and doing that same motion but I changed the angle so if that helps at all it may not have but I changed the angle a little so you could see it and then pull it pull it through and then anytime you're on the other side, you can kind of see exactly where you need to go. So once I flip this back over, it's kind of um, a little on the intuitive side that you can see where you're gonna need to go, which is in that fourth hole there. And so back through one more time, doing our, our loop-de-loops. Um, under here and then back through the loop that we just made and I'm going down um, on this one because the next hole that I need to go in is facing that way and so I'm gonna go that go that way so that my needle and my everything is um, going that way already for me making it easier for me and then through that hole which is the last one and then you just need to pull it through and tie it off and look it you guys yeah so hopefully it looks the way it's supposed to i'm going to tighten some of those uh things i think later it looks like one of them was a little bit loose and i'll tighten it um i guess not on camera but you can just you know you can tighten the things even though you're, you've already done it, you can just go back and pull some things until they're the right tension. All right, and get our last little tie in there, move our needle out of the way, and grab our book, our ribbon-bound journal, for the final reveal. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. I will be decorating it in part two, so stay tuned for that. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with a crafty friend and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.